फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ऑनलाइन सेशन क्लास टेंथ सब्जेक्ट बायोलॉजी हाउ डू ऑर्गेनिज्म रिप्रोड्यूस सो वी डिवाइडेड दिस चैप्टर अंडर फोर सेशन एंड दिस इज द फोर्थ वन आई एम जी आर छोपड़े पीजीटी बायोलॉजी जे एन बी नाउ लेट एस रिकॉल वॉट यू आर स्टडीड इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट द चैप्टर रिप्रोडक्शन इज द प्रोसेस बाय विच living organism produce new individuals which are similar to themselves and the same kind of organism they will produce so we know that reproduction ensure the continuity of life on earth from generation to generation single cell organisms use different types of asexual mode of reproduction that already we have studied multicellular organisms use both a sexual and sexual mode of reproduction we also know that in sexual reproduction two gametes that is male and female are inert they fuse and produce a single a diploid cell that we called as a zygote you know that in the plant so zygote develops into embryo in the uterus that you have studied in the human beings then here we are discussing what happens if the egg is not fertilized in last session we have discussed what happens if the egg is fertilized that zygote will produce if there is no fertilization then what will happen how it takes place in human beings if fertilized and if not fertilized then what is reproductive health that is another point we are going to discuss today now we know this male reproductive system which consists of different parts like a testis there are two testis they have a two functions produce male gametes sperm and secretes a hormone testosterone then a long tube that is duct we call a vasa deferens that carry the secretion of testis along with the secretion of these glands seminal vesicle then there is a common ejaculatory duct called as urethra so this is a male reproductive system also we have studied a female reproductive system so there are two ovaries they produce again female gamete ova also secrete hormones then there are two tubes called fallopian tube ya oviduct that is a site for fertilization ya even carry the fertilized ya unfertilized ova then there is a uterus now inside the uterus you can see perimetrium myometrium and endometrium so this endometrium play very very important role okay during this a reproductive cycle now we also studied see the fertilization so there is a fusion of a male and female gamete takes place here in the zygote now so formation of zygote by the union of sperm and the ovum in fallopian tube we called as a fertilization so here the sperm enter through the vaginal passage during the sexual intercourse it travel towards and reach the oviduct and encounter if the egg is present during that period in the fallopian tube then it fuse with the egg one sperm will fuse with one ova at a time and produce a diploid cell what you call zygote so this is how the one ovum is surrounded by a hundreds or thousands of sperm out of that one will reach inside and see there is a fusion of the male gamete nuclei with the female gamete nuclei so father and mother both nucleus will fuse and produce a zygote so the fertilized egg now we refer as zygote it start dividing again here only by mitosis and form a ball of cells that will develop into a embryo now we use the word here embryo so this embryo is implanted in the lining of the uterus that is endometrium and where it continue to grow and develop its organs and become a fetus fetus so the uterus prepare itself every month to receive and nurture the growing embryo so everything is done by this uterus 
So the lining of the uterus, that is endometria, thickens and it gets thickening, multiplying, and is richly supplied with the blood. Because that blood carry the nutrients, oxygen, and nourish the growing embryo. That is provide food which is present in the mother's blood. So whatever the mother eat, so that will transport it to the fetus through this blood. Now, you can see here a different stages of embryo development. Okay. So here it is a fertilized egg. It is shown in the mouse that is mammalian egg. Then it is a two cells division. See that there is a clear cut division. Two cells are produced. Then four cell. Here it is a four cell. Four cell become eight cell. Then here 16 cell like that. So number of cells is doubling. 16 to it will become 32. So upper one is the diagrammatic and the lower one is real. So these are the, what you call embryo development. Now see. Here there is a ball of cells, yeah, what you call the stage, a morula. So this morula, embedding of the embryo in the uterus, enlarged apart. You can see, this is the uterine layer, a uterine wall. And here, the embryo will get embedded. And then, it will take all the nutrients which are present in the mother's blood and develop into a fully developed fetus. The embedding of embryo in the thick lining of the uterus, here it is called implantation. So, there may be one question. What is implantation? Embedding of embryo in the thick lining of the uterus, that is endometrium, is called implantation. Now, once it is get implanted, after implantation, so between the uterus and the embryo, a special tissue, very, very important. A special tissue, a disc, develop between the uterus wall. Yeah, we call here is a uterine wall. And the embryo, or what you are referring a fetus, which is called as placenta. So again, there is a one question. So they will ask, what is placenta? So placenta is the special tissue, a disc-like structure produced between the uterine wall and the embryo wall. So that is called placenta. Now you can see different stages. So already we have studied. So see inside the ovary, there are a different stages of a ova development. And once the ova, the ovum is released, so in the fallopian tube, and if the sperms are present, so the fertilization takes place, and that zygote will divide, and see here, that will pass through this Palofian tube and here in the uterus it will come and it will get implant. So here you can see the fertilized egg yeah, embryo. We know here the fur will get implanted in the uterine wall. See, this is the structure of placenta. You can see there is a finger-like structures will lie that enter into the mother uterus. Placenta. How you can define a special tissue between embryo and a mother uterus, that is endometrium wall, layer of the uterine wall. Very, very important question. This is a disc which is embedded in the uterine wall. It contains a finger-like structures called as villi. You can see here, these are villi. On the embryo side of the tissue, that embryo wall will produce that villi. Now, what are the functions of placenta? Second question. It provides a large surface area because of that finger-like projections. Helps in exchange of nutrients, all sugar, whatever it is. Oxygen, it will give the oxygen and take a carbon dioxide from the mother to the embryo. It removes the waste produced or generated by the fetus. Whatever the waste, so it will do a nutritive, it will do a breathing also, exchange of gases. It also do excretory. It act as an endocrine tissue and it also produce certain hormone. Okay, that is uh, you can study in higher classes. Yeah, just to find out the references. What are those four hormones? Yeah, five hormones it will secrete. Then the umbilical cord will join the embryo to the placenta. Okay, so this is how 
the placenta play very very important role and that indicates the mother is pregnant so there is now next cycle will stop now after fertilization what will happen that is called post fertilization so there are certain terminologies you should remember one is gestation the period from fertilization to the birth of baby fertilization se leke bacche ka janm hone tak jo period hota hai so that is gestation period in human beings it approximately 9 month ya 9 month 10 days they say or in days if you calculate 280 days then how many weeks generally the doctor will refer the weeks okay just to find out how many weeks are there okay then parturition that is when the fully developed baby now you can call so there is a, a huge contraction of the uterine muscles gradually that will start the pain yeah we call it is a labor pain push the baby out of the body mother's body through a birth canal or what you call vagina so it is happens due to a rhythmic contraction of the uterine muscles and one hormone which is released during that time among that one is oxytocin so this is very very again important you can see here the oxytocin is there and along with oxytocin one more hormone you can find out that is relaxin relaxin okay so see this is what you are now up to studied fertilization day 1 then after 5 day 28 day 34 day 40 to 42 days 47 days 16 week ya yeah, 40 weeks as i told you find out how many weeks so within 40 weeks it will get fully developed and ready to born so the average weight of a new born baby average jo healthy we call about 3.5 kg agar 3 se kam hota hai ya 2.5 se kam hota hai we call it is not fully developed baby now these are certain pictures see you can this is a 8 week first one a 8 week picture this is 16 week here it is a 24 week you can see all organs are here develop start developing and this is a newborn baby now just to watch this video from this will come to know parturition process how it will takes place in human beings mm -hmm. la 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 hey, 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 hey. during pregnancy a woman's uterus nurtures and protects the developing fetus during gestation a full term pregnancy is approximately 40 weeks when the fetus has matured and birth is imminent The baby begins to go through a series of movements that help it navigate through the birth canal. During labor, the uterus contracts at regular intervals, causing the opening of the uterus, the cervix, to dilate. These contractions are commonly referred to as labor pains. When the contractions cause the cervix to dilate to 10 cm, the opening is large enough to allow the baby to pass from the uterus into the vagina this is the umbilical cord this is the, the vagina is a muscular separate. tube that can expand to accommodate the baby's head and shoulders uterine contractions continue until the baby and the placenta are delivered now this is what happens if the egg is fertilized develop into zygote implantation develop into embryo then fetus then baby and the birth of baby takes place the question is what happens when the egg is not fertilized so the thick and soft uterus lining have a lot of a blood capillaries in it it is now not required so the thickening of the uterus is not required because egg is not fertilized so thus the unfertilized ovum or egg dies within the day 
and the uterus lining also breaks down breaks down so the lining slowly breaks and comes out through the vagina as a blood and mucus blood and mucus so this cycle takes place roughly every month and is known as what you call menstruation cycle ya menstrual cycle so this is like if you give one analogy agar aap kisi ke sath comparison karte ho so baby means coming a new guest so when any new guest is arriving to our home so generally we will prepare everything in the same way the in the mother's body the uterus will prepare for the new guest who is going to arrival that is after fertilization so that preparation will go on now once if he's come to know that so guest is not coming then what will happen we also feel bad so same way here the uterus knows that there is no arrival of a new guest so therefore the uterus start weeping so the menstruation is also called as uterus weeping okay that is a simple way so this process usually last for about a 2 to 8 days but generally we take 3 to 5 days now see these are the steps so womb lining endometrium is set so you can see there is a breaking so that is called menstruation so it is 1 2 3 4 5 days start of menstruation and once the menstruation stop see here the follicles also develop that is for the regeneration of new ova and you can see here the new lining of uterus form and when the egg is released from the ovary if the egg fertilize you know what happens if the egg is not fertilized the egg dies if not fertilized so womb lining continues to thicken and if it is not fertilized so again they will break up and the cycle will continue so this is a menstruation day start of menstruation then here it will end around 5 or 8 days whatever it is 13 14 15 or 14th day is considered as the ovulation period during that the egg is released and there is a if intercourse could result in fertilization so that is what you call here then after that it is depends upon if the egg is fertilized so the thickening will continue if the egg is not fertilized so that thickening will stop and the uterine layer back so this is always repeat after every 28 days so roughly so during the menstruation the breakdown and removal of the inner that is endometrium thick and soft lining of the uterus along with its blood vessels in the form of vaginal bleeding is called menstrual flow or menstruation since the process of menstruation in women occurs again and again after a fixed period of 28 days or maybe 30 days so therefore it is called monthly cycle it stops when the ovum or egg gets fertilized and the woman gets pregnant so it will remain for a 5 or 6 months okay there is no menstrual period especially during if the mother is lactating feeding the baby otherwise again after 5 to 6 months it will repeat see the women cycle completely A woman's cycle is an opportunity for healing each and every month. Our cycle moves through four distinct phases and begins on the first day of our period. During the first phase, the lining of the uterus begins to shed. See, here, there is a shedding of endometrium layer. The bleeding that occurs will be different in quality and amount with every woman. Women tend to be very reflective and sensitive at this time and often feel to rest and take things very easy. These are called bleeding days, yeah, menstrual. When the bleeding has stopped, the cycle moves into the You can see now second phase. Okay? So again the thickening of layer start ovary will produce a new egg that is ovulation just to see next phase in preparation for ovulation the release of specific hormones activates the cervix to secrete a mucus known as cervical mucus 
the lining of the uterus begins to build back up and the ovary is ready to release an egg into the fallopian tube. There you can see the egg is released and here the thickening of uterus again begins. So this is all called as pre-ovulation period, yet this. The, the third phase is the post-ovulation phase. After ovulation, the cervical mucus forms a plug at the cervix. Now you can see there is a plug formation. Now if the egg is fertilized here, so it will stop. If the egg is not fertilized, so that cycle will continue. You know, here you can see what is the thickness of the uterus layer, inner layer. Through the course of one day, the egg makes its way down to the uterus and if it is not fertilized, it will be absorbed back into the body. Okay. The last phase, the phase. Now next see what happens. of the cycle is the premenstrual phase. This is where the hormone responses prepare for clearing the uterus once again. This is often a time of feeling some tension, both physically and emotionally. Yet all of this being the body's natural response to correcting the gap in the level of care we give ourselves and the level of care we actually deserve. This is the healing that the wonder and magic of our cycle is constantly providing. thickening will now break up and the next cycle will begin. Now come to the next concept is reproductive health. Now we know that in lower classes 9th standard we have studied what is health. According to WHO, World Health Organization, 1948 established in Geneva, it means a total well-being in all aspects of reproduction. We should be physically fit, emotionally balanced, behavior and social well-being okay that is referred as reproductive health so during the adolescence period so there is a lot of pressure from our parents for participating in many okay from our friends for participating in many activities so there is also pressure from families especially on girls to get married and start having the children once they cross 18 or 20 years of age. Or even from there is a pressure from a government agencies to avoid having a more children. So a lot of pressures are there, different kinds of forces are there. Among that one is there is a chance of STD, that is sexually transmitted diseases. The diseases or infections which are transmitted through a sexual contact or intercourse between the healthy person and infected person. So there are certain STDs or bacterial infections like gonorrhea, syphilis, chlamydiasis, trichomoniasis. And there are certain viral infections like genital rot, HIV, AIDS, yeah, genital herpes, yeah, even hepatitis B. So there may be one question, give examples of STD, one from bacteria, one from virus, they classify the following into viral STDs and bacterial STDs, just to remember this. Now, STDs can be prevented very easily, it is in our hands, how? So avoid sex with unknown partners and multiple partners. Always use condoms during the coitus. So condom play here important two roles. One, it will prevent from STDs and also it will help in controlling the birth. In case of any doubt, go to the qualified doctor for early detection and get complete treatment. If diagnosed with earlier, so these STDs can be cured. Then population explosion. So reproduction is the process by which organisms increase their population. Everyone wants to increase. So the rate of birth and the death in a given population will determine its size. 
more is the birth rate so density will increases it decrease everybody's standards living if the population increases inequality in the society we found okay inequality okay see to make the people awareness we celebrate 11th july every year as a population day and presently as per 2019 india has about 1.36 billion and world around 7.7 .7 billion and still it is increasing okay so just find out what is the birth rate in india and in the world now how to control population explosion in other word how to control birth yeah how to avoid pregnancy so the prevention of pregnancy in women by preventing fertilization so if there is no fertilization no pregnancy no birth of the baby so that is here referred as contraceptive contraception a contraceptive methods any device or instrument or chemical that is drug which prevents the pregnancy in women is called contraceptive devices all the birth control methods can be broadly classified into three categories number one barrier method so there should be certain barrier between uh, sperm and ova or chemical methods use hormones or certain chemicals either to suppress the ovulation or kill the sperm and third one is permanent that is surgical method now we we'll see one by one so mechanical barriers see it may be a condom it may be a diaphragm or cervical caps or walls or it may be spermicidal cream so these are a physical barrier in which sperm does not reach the egg example condoms on the penis so that is the best method covering the word covering ring in the vagina okay so these are the walls now chemical method contraceptive acts by changing the hormonal balance in the body of a woman so that eggs are not released on the time and the fertilization cannot occur so many are there oral pills generally they are called which are taken orally through the mouth process so they change the hormonal balance again here they use either combination of progesterone or estrogen so they can cause a side effect also so therefore we should take these oces oral pills under the guidance of physician then chemical method ya yeah, iud you can see here is an iud copper t it is called intra uterine contraceptive device iucd yeah they will remove contraceptive and just read iud intra uterine device that is use of loop or commonly called copper t so they are placed in the uterus to prevent a pregnancy here the fertilization takes place but implantation not happens by a qualified doctor or a trained nurse only they prevent the implantation of the fertilized egg in the uterus so how copper t prevent the pregnancy or control the population so this is your answer it also may cause side effects due to irritation of the uterus ya yeah, inside the uterus so there are certain advantages and disadvantages the third method is surgical method it is a permanent in which the union of gametes is blocked completely earlier two methods are temporary among that one is vasectomy that is vasa difference in the male is blocked by cutting and lie at time so the sperms will transfer prevented sperms transfer will be prevented then in female it is a tubectomy that is the fallopian tube in the female is blocked again by cutting and tying so the egg will not be able to reach the uterus or in the even fallopian tube itself half part so in surgical method in both cases the fertilization will not takes place because that block so they are safe for the long run but we know the surgery itself if you don't take proper precautions during the surgery 
so they may cause infection and other problems see here the wasa difference in both is cut tied and cut here so that sperms are produced but their sperms will come up to here and they cannot transfer through this ejaculatory duct here the, it is blocked so ova will produce but the sperms are not reach here so therefore the fusion of gametes not takes place fallopian tubes are tied and cut so first one is tobac uh, vasectomy second one is tobactomy just you can see we will do also surgical so this is a wasa difference now you can see vasectomy is a surgical contraceptive procedure whereby the vas deferens are permanently divided preventing the sperm now here they will cut now sperms are produced they will come up to here but they cannot pass through this here into the urethra matazoa from leaving the epididymis in the normal female reproductive tract the ovary releases ova into the uterine tube the passageway which carries them to the uterus the uterine tube is a common site of fertilization of the ovum here it is a carry but now see what happens this is normal one tubal ligation is a surgical contraceptive procedure see here that fallopian tube is cut and ligated so that ova will come to here but it will not transfer to the uterus whereby the uterine tubes are permanently divided this division creates a barrier between sperm and ova that prevents okay. fertilization so this is how okay but people are misusing certain methods one is abortion that is removal of unwanted pregnancies by surgery generally it is happening more in a girl child so therefore the government has started one program beti bachao beti padhao feticides illegal sex selective abortion of female fetus a female fetus so this may be misused by people who do not want a particular child which generally happens with the female child so for a healthy society we need male and female sex ratio must be maintained find out in which state the female ratio is higher than male ratio and in which state the female ratio is very less than male ratio per 1000 male so prenatal and before the birth of baby the sex sex determination has been prohibited by the government and there is a strict law behind that so finally we'll summarize sexual reproduction involves the two individuals for the creation of a new individual in human beings the sexual mode of reproduction is a common sexual reproduction in human beings involves the introduction of sperm in the vagina of the female and fertilization occurs in the fallopian tube result in formation of a zygote so the fertilize the egg or zygote start dividing and form a ball of cells or a embryo so the embryo is implanted in the lining of the uterus where they continue to grow and develop organs to become a fetus reproductive health refers to physical emotional behavioral and social well being of an individual yes studies may caused by your bacteria or virus we have seen reproduction leads to increase in the human population so therefore we have to control so it needs a methods to control population or birth rate so there are different contraceptive methods to avoid pregnancy can be achieved by the use of condoms ya oral pills ya copper tea or even surgical method okay so this is about this chapter now after this chapter you can visit and you can view the online test also for example you log in to the student socrative then enter this code and you can give for example c okay the population of thermophilic archibacteria are generally found in hot springs and any change to the temperature of the water affects the survival of the archibacteria if the temperature of hot spring get reduced change in which component 
can allow the survival of a few members of these archibacteria. So you log in and just you give the answer A, B, or C, D, whatever it is. So like this, we'll get a different questions. So that can be possible just to log in the student login a socrate okay so this is how you can study this chapter and you can understand so thank you for joining this live session and keep watching a youtube channel gopal chopade